Hello and welcome to Prime Investor, where we research and you profit. My name is Gaurav Menon, and joining me today are two analysts of our research firm, Chandra Chudamani and Anush Raj. Hello, Mani and Anush. Hi, Gaurav. Hello. We've got a special episode for you today, where we talk about the EV disruption. It's more important to understand which stocks to avoid. So stay until the end. To start off. Green number plates are slowly becoming a common sight these days. Every day while going home, I play a small game where I count the number of uh, vehicles with green plates. And almost every day, it seems like that number is going up. Uh, Anush, what's happening here? Okay, so before that, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you yeah. see a lot of two-wheelers or, or do you see a lot of four-wheelers? Uh, it's definitely two-wheelers. I see a lot more two-wheelers on the road. Yeah, you are right, and uh, you should be seeing a lot more uh, uh, two wheelers on the road. So this is a very simple thing. So if you look at the uh, image, so you can see the price difference between a petrol uh, two wheeler and a uh, electric two wheeler. So what is clearly happening is that a two wheeler that is uh, used for basic commutation purpose, like uh, for whatever it is, like uh, uh, somebody who uh, uses it for uh, 10 or 20 or 30 or even 40 kilometers a day. These are uh, mostly the uh, scooters. And scooters is like, so if you take the uh, total market, like uh, in India, it is like almost nearly uh, uh, two crore two wheelers are sold in a year. And uh, out of that, like uh, one fourth is, or even more than one fourth is scooters. So which is a basic commuter vehicle. And what is happening is that uh, from the uh, image, you can see the price difference here. So the electric two wheeler is available at the same price of that of a petrol two wheeler. So what happens here? So anyone who is switching to EV is completely saving on the running cost because it is, it is almost negligible as compared to the uh, fuel price these days. So why this has happened is because of uh, uh, one important thing. It is the government trust and the subsidies. And uh, uh, for an electric uh, two-wheeler, government is giving subsidy of anywhere between 35,000 to 55,000 per vehicle. So as a result, and there is also one more component, like in for a petrol uh, scooter, the GST or the tax component is 28 percentage, whereas it is only 5 percentage for an electric two-wheeler. So as a result, an electric two-wheeler is available for the same price of that of a petrol two-wheeler. And uh, due to this, like uh, for anyone switching to this, it is a complete uh, savings in cost. And uh, you can see whatever uh, we have uh, shown. And these are all the basic commuting uh, 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 scooters or basic commuting two-wheelers that are mostly sold. These companies actually lead the sales charts and these companies actually provide the exact switch in terms of cost uh, from IC to uh, uh, electric. So this is where actually this uh, common man is now switching to save a significant uh, uh, amount on the running cost. So to put in perspective life, if anybody is running some uh, 40 to 50 kilometers a day or less than 50 kilometers a day, it is like uh, it is between anywhere between 2000 to 4000 rupees per month in savings in petrol cost itself. So that is driving the adoption and uh, uh, that is why it is accelerating and various estimates put uh, like uh, we will have a penetration of 15 to 20 percentage by 2025 and almost like 30 to 40 percentage by uh, 2030 in this segment but when it comes to four wheelers it is entirely different thing it is a premium stuff and uh, 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 what is happening in that uh, space is entirely different so uh, Anush will explain more about that. Uh, over to you, Anush. Yeah. So, um, as you know, the electric vehicle, uh, the concept itself, uh, in four wheelers is not able to catch up with as much speed like in the way of the two wheelers. Uh, there are several reasons for it. Uh, a couple of reasons that could be, one will be the charging infrastructure. Uh, second will be the driving range of the vehicle itself. And three, the most importantly, the cost. So if you could see uh, this chart, you would be able to understand that uh, um, I've just given two different segments, uh, the uh, sub four meter SUV segment, which is like the fastest selling uh, segment in India. And the second one will be the regular SUV segment. 
in both these cases uh, you'd see that there is a price difference of anywhere between three and a half lakh to seven lakhs uh, this uh, is quite large i'll tell you why uh, people especially picking the sub 4 meter suv uh, like you know they are like more more of a daily usage kind of people and also uh, they would occasionally want to travel long distances so uh, a, a 4 lakh extra on their budget will be a little bit hard to bite through and also uh, this charging infrastructure not at in place across india is also having a slight step back however there is a good push within the urban cities because the number of charging stations within a city has expanded rapidly. Whichever city you could just Google uh, electric charging stations near you, uh, you will see a lot of points uh, when you are in the city. But if you slightly zoom out and you take a step back, as your city border ends, uh, you will start seeing very less number of uh, you know these charging stations across. So once we see a lot of charging stations popping up all over India, then uh, you will know how the real growth would be. As of today, uh, the number of EV vehicles uh, in the passenger car segment is very low, but it is not going to stay the same. It is going to pick up speed uh, just like the EV two-wheelers. And uh, it is expected, like, you know, it's projected about somewhere around 20% of the overall four-wheeler market would become EV in 2013. That is, uh, if there are going to be 5 million vehicles, about a million vehicles will be electric uh, driven. That's, yeah, that's how it's going to be. That's uh, really interesting, Anush. So, so far we've talked about uh, the two wheelers and the four wheeler EV ecosystem. Now, I see that for every one manufacturing company, there are about 10 ancillary companies who supply to them. That's like a one in 10 ratio. And I also have some data here telling me that uh, auto ancillary space accounts for 2.3% of the GDP and employs 1.5 million people. So how will this EV disruption impact the growth and valuation of the ancillary space? Yes. So uh, the first, uh, there are two parts here. One is the growth and the other is valuation. So here again, uh, uh, so I will take the help of this graph to explain. So actually in the last three years, we actually had a degrowth across all the automobile segments, whether it is two, year, two wheelers or uh, uh, passenger cars or commercial vehicles or whatever it is. So uh, uh, this, this has not been usual, but due to COVID or whatever uh, it is like uh, it has happened. So, so generally India is a uh, growth economy and uh, growth market for all these two wheelers or passenger cars and all. So when we model a scenario where the industry as such is going to grow, then uh, uh, how it will shape up, uh, it is quite interesting. Like, uh, so in a growing scenario, uh, like we can divide it into two parts. One is uh, what is going to happen until 2025, where now the EV adoption is taking off, and what is going to happen between 2025 and uh, 2030 when it can accelerate. Uh, so uh, as we, as I explained earlier, the projections are like uh, 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 30 to 40 percentage of the two wheelers will become electric by 2030. and approximately 20 percentage of uh, passenger cars can become electric so if we model if we assume a growth scenario where the two-wheeler industry is going to the overall volumes in the industry is going to grow from whatever is now like uh, 1.6 or 1.7 crore vehicles uh, to almost some uh, 3.6 or 3.7 crore vehicles in 2030 what is going to happen is that the incremental growth is going to be captured by uh, electric vehicles so at that point of time, at that volume, uh, at nearly uh, uh, three and a half crores or 3.6 crores uh, two wheelers, you are going to have 40 percentage in electric. So the entire incremental growth is going to come from uh, uh, electric. And as a result, uh, the existing players, uh, like they may see a, a period of uh, slower growth uh, initially, or they may see flat growth. So actually, it is not like they are going to go out of business. Even in 2030, they may be selling the same number of vehicles or even a bit higher number of vehicles. But the incremental growth is going to be captured by electric vehicles. Similarly, in the case of uh, passenger cars, like if we are if we are selling like uh, uh, 30 lakh passenger cars or 3 million passenger cars, and if it is going to become 5 million, then out of that 5, uh, uh, 1 million is going to be EV, actually. So 
the uh, growth is going to be for the, for the uh, uh, petrol or the ICE vehicles, it is going to be from 3 to uh, 4 million. So it is actually a very low rate of growth compared to the overall industry growth rate. So this is the challenge. Like uh, uh, the, uh, It is not like, as I said, the companies are no, not going to go out of business, but their growth is going to get saturated. Maybe they may see uh, growth uh, for next two or three years and then it can uh, plateau or uh, after two, three, four years, it can decline. So it can be a, a pattern like that. So the overall growth opportunity is shrinking for uh, IC uh, uh, companies. So now the second part is evaluation. So why this is uh, uh, important is because uh, valuation is a matter of growth also. So wherever growth is there, valuation is there. And wherever growth is not there, valuation is not there. That is how market operates. So when uh, uh, growth shrinks, like uh, if the company is valued at uh, 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 in the market at expensive valuation, then it can uh, uh, clearly decline for a longer period of time. So, but for the time being, yes, most of the companies are uh, actually accounting for a bit of disruption or because of the last three years of slowdown, they are valued at moderate levels only. Uh, to highlight an example, so you might have, you all might have heard about a company called Bosch. So it is a German company. The company's main business has been automobile fuel injection systems. So there was a, a period when Bosch had a rapid uh, phase of growth until 2015. So you also may, you may also remember like uh, we had a trend where uh, uh, people used to uh, prefer diesel cars over petrol cars, like the dieselization. That was a major trend that was happening in India at that point of time due to uh, economies and then uh, taxes and price differential between petrol and diesel and all those things. So during this period, this company could grow at an accelerated pace. But uh, in the last two, three years, like after the uh, emission norms uh, 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 changed to BS4 and even to later to BS6, this opportunity has been fading away because uh, from diesel, everything is going back to petrol. And now petrol too, it is like uh, some part is going back to CNG and some part to electric. So for a company that was into fuel injection systems, like the opportunity was a bit fading away, but uh, it, it, it is a leader in commercial vehicles also. So that opportunity still exists. But uh, whatever the incremental opportunity that got created for it until the 2015 period, that is actually uh, a lot is fading away due to this uh, EV change. So if you take the sales of the company, it almost peaked out in 2015. That is seven years behind. So for the seven years, it was not able to overtake that uh, sales actually. And if you take the profits also, it is like peaked out in 2017. And since 2017, for the last five years, profits has not been growing actually. So if you, uh, and so what is the end result? You can see the stock price, which has been actually uh, falling from this uh, high it uh, registered uh, in uh, 2015 or 17. It has been continuously declining actually. So it has uh, corrected significantly. So this, this actually presents a scenario where uh, what can happen to a company if it is richly valued and the opportunities fading away for it. So this is, this is what uh, 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 can happen for many companies where product disruption is going to happen or they are, uh, they are not able to grow their sales. And if they are trading at or if their valuation in the market at this point of time is uh, higher, then uh, 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 it is a matter of concern because they... Uh, if they are not able to grow their sales and profits, then uh, uh, they can correct a lot. So this is where uh, actually one has to be more careful because uh, uh, as far as an investor is concerned, it makes sense to buy growing companies because that is where you get uh, uh, opportunity to make returns. If growth is not there and the stock is at expensive valuation, it can only uh, correct from there and uh, uh, result in uh, negative returns. So this uh, uh, looking at uh, growth prospects or looking at uh, finding out companies that are uh, not disrupted and that are able to grow is very important. And uh, how we can find out such companies, Anush will actually take through you in detail in which are the segments that are actually going to get disrupted and uh, which are the segments that are not going to get disrupted and how you can find uh, uh, opportunity in this space. So over to you, Anush. Thank you. To give a sense of the big picture of what is actually happening in the EV market today, uh, we'll, now, we'll now have to understand a little bit about the differentiation uh, which was there in the past and what it is right now. So previously, the major difference uh, in different automobiles 
will be actually the mechanical driven and the performance driven based on the engine spec and all those stuff going forward the core competency will not be about um, manufacturing itself rather it could be more into the design and uh, the manufacturing will be done through contract manufacturing process um, you would have recently seen a private equity player paying about 9 billion in valuation to tata motors electric mobility division if you see that in uh, relative numbers it's almost half the size of what tata motors is today and it's almost one third of the size of uh, maruti suzuki uh, you all know maruti suzuki makes about uh, 15 lakh vehicles per year however the tata motors electric uh, division which i just mentioned makes about 15000 but with such low numbers if they are uh, you know uh, having a such high valuation you see this kind of extreme valuation uh, gives base that going forward the new companies are going to be very asset light because they are just going to own the software and designs whereas uh, the manufacturing is just simply going to be done by tata motors uh in a recent interview by mr saju uh, who is the head of transportation department of tata alexi uh, he just mentions that uh, cars are going to resemble your smartphones uh, so if you know you will get an annual software update on your smartphone which will essentially uh, like you know uh, make it a lot cooler and things like that so that is exactly uh, what is going to happen in the cars and two wheelers also not that it is going to happen it has actually started in a few countries abroad and uh, here in india too they are uh, to a slighter extent in the two wheeler space um, wait that's awesome wow okay yeah it, it's there so uh, i just have something to show so if you see this uh, image um, this is a tesla model 3's a software update which has been given over the last couple of years from 2019 so there are there are a dozen of uh, updates and more than hundreds of feature additions uh, let us not go too much into these details but what i'm trying to, to mention here is that say for example you bought a car uh, a regular car in 2019 with all the top features but about 3 and a half years now your car is already outdated it will not have most of the features that the same brand or the same car is going to have which is coming out in 2022 right so that is the, that that puts the buyers uh, kindly on and off but here in tesla they have tried to solve that problem because with this constant upgrades and constant software updates uh, they try to keep up even the older cars match the current incoming cars uh, let me give you a uh, one shot example from this uh, say for example uh, tesla introduced a performance feature called the warp mode okay so what essentially happens is that uh, if you heat up the battery like you know essentially tesla run battery so if your battery is heated up uh, at a certain temperature uh, the flow of charges will be much more higher and your performance of the overall vehicle is boosted so uh, tesla initially had this uh, hardware in place so that uh, they would make sure that the car starts even in the cold condition but after a couple of months or maybe a couple of quarters a software update enabled that particular hardware to make it take to make the battery heated up so that the performance of the car will increase so the hardware was already in place and the software update made the car move faster so this is something this is what i'm trying to explain to you guys by telling that it is going to be a, a software driven architecture in the future uh so yeah moving on to the indian ev story uh, right now you would have known that uh, disruption is inevitable but uh, i'm not we are not going to like you know discuss that disruption is going to erase everything that is going to be uh, in existence today in the auto manufacturer segment and the ancillaries are going to go out no uh, just like how uh, money sir explained a uh, little earlier uh, it's the growth the growth is going to be the factor here so of the of the 1 million new cars that are going to come out uh, maybe like the 1 and 1/2 million in the next 8 years 1 million is going to be electric so and uh, maybe uh, another million will be the conventional uh, ic engine vehicles so 
that growth is going to be majorly be captured by the ev segment so uh, this is something what we have to look out for uh, what we have done is uh, i've just uh, given a detailed picture of different components that all put, put together to make a, a complete vehicle right so as you could see there are a lot of components which are just going to stay back even if the ev play comes in here right uh, let us take a few example cases you see on, if you see on the right side like you know the onboard entertainment your lighting your seats your interiors or your wheels your axles your suspension system braking system they're all going to be there right so there is no uh, replacement as in uh, ev is not going to disrupt them because cars are still going to run on wheels you need suspension system for your comfortability you are going to have seats for sitting on it you're going to have your roof you're going to have the lighting you're going to have the interior the onboard entertainment your speakers your surround sound uh, your display your console your air conditioning system all of this all of this are going to stay there so out of uh, just like how you mentioned uh, in the starting of the video for every automobile company there's going to be 10 auto ancillary companies these these are the maybe i'll say the nine of the 10 auto auto ancillary companies which is still going to keep manufacturing this even if it is going to be an electric vehicle but there are going to be certain component manufacturers which are going to get affected for example just like how we told the growth is going to be more towards ev and not towards ic engines so whoever is manufacturing uh, engine or engine transmission parts or exhaust system parts for ic engine companies are going to get slightly affected affected as in they are not going to lose on their revenue stream the revenue stream is going to be there but it is going to get saturated right so that is something uh, which uh, everybody needs to look out for and i have to mention this engine and transmission or whatever which is about to get disrupted will mostly be in the two wheeler and the passenger car segment and uh, not much on the heavy vehicle that is the trucking segment because the trucking segment uh, is most likely to be continuing the ic engine part whereas uh, the passenger commute on the two wheelers and four wheelers will move to the electric station uh, so we have done a very detailed blog uh, on our website so uh, i think uh, garo will leave the link below so we have segregated the top 50 uh, companies on the automotive ancillary space based on market cap and we have uh, given them uh, different groups whether uh, you know they'll have an impact or whether they'll have no impact whether they'll have high impact because of this uh, ev disruption coming in place so i would ask you guys to check it out after this video and uh, yeah so even otherwise uh, disruption is going to be there and uh, let us let us not just talk about the ev disruption alone let us keep ev disruption aside uh, just look at this picture so in the last uh, say from 1960 to 2022 that's about 60 years you see the evolution of an interior of a car like if you see the early 1960s the car was purely mechanical you would see a lot of uh, like you know all these uh, me- mechanical based devices your speedometer your rpm meter and even your fuel sensor everything will be like you know manual but uh, fast forward about 40 years in 2000s you see a lot of buttons and uh, you see a little bit of uh, electrical and electronic items like such as your radio your vcr player your cd player and things like that but from that point in time when the internet revolution starts you we have started moving on to a more uh, digital electronic space several years from there you see if you see the same car's interior you see a lot of digital electronics you see your map your gps systems and uh, you see a lot of all these uh, fancy buttons and your entire cluster itself you you have like a cockpit more than a driver seat and uh, today in 2022 if you see the last picture on the right you absolutely see no buttons on that you just have a single large display screen from the left end of the car to the right end of the car and everything is made into a touch screen display and uh, going forward we are talking about automated driving and uh, automatic uh, you know everything everything is automated everything is going 
to a, a software based software driven model so this is also a disruption that can come in like you know look up look out for the companies uh, which does uh, dashboards which does uh, switches all those stuff so i'm just trying to open up your mind here and uh, yeah. say that disruption is coming at different points inside an automobile and it does not restrict just with evs yeah that's it that is amazing and all of this is really interesting so coming to the really good part how can an investor find the best stocks to play the uh, ev uh, ev disruption and the auto ancillary space yeah so as uh, anush has actually beautifully explained how this change is happening like uh, with the complexity because if in any auto the mechanicals is the complex part with the complexity going away and it is getting replaced by a simple motor and many moving parts software is going to differentiate between two oems and it is migrating to that kind of architecture so as he clearly explained with the help of the image what are going to go away and what are going to be there all these things he has also clearly explained so now uh, as uh, as anush said we have uh, done a detailed classification like uh, for 50 companies based on uh, we have taken companies above 1000 crores in market cap and just uh, try to figure out uh, how they are going to get impacted so we have classified these companies as the ones who are not going to get impacted that is one category then the ones that are going to get impacted to a some extent that is the low impact category where uh, the impact is going to be low and the companies will be able to navigate it and uh, uh, grow actually so it is not much and then the medium impact category where the impact is actually happening but these companies are also taking other initiatives like they are diversifying they are also getting into ev area with uh, uh, their own plants their own products and all those things so they are they are also even uh, position to navigate so but uh, uh, as far as investors are concerned uh, if you go by this classification the low impact and the uh, no impact uh, no impact category and the low impact category these two categories actually provide uh, hunting ground to pick uh, future winners so you can uh, uh, visit our blog and see the classification and there is also a five pointer checklist we have given along with like uh, what are the various parameters to look at so what a company is able to add in terms of new uh, products or expand its uh, uh, product portfolio beyond what it is doing and what a company can uh, actually do so what structure it can evolve so that it is not going to get impacted by this disruption but at the same time it can ensure that it is going to grow so we have also given a five point uh, 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 checklist on what all parameters to look at to uh, ensure that the company can actually Uh, grow its business despite uh, whatever disruption that is happening so that that is a qualitative side and the next is the quantitative side where we have to look at the numbers and the valuation uh, so there also like uh, a simple thing would be like uh, uh, as i have mentioned in the beginning automobile sales peaked out in 2019 and it has been declining for the last 3 years but if we look at the auto ancillary companies there are few companies very few Uh, who managed to grow their sales beyond the 2019 uh, numbers like uh, whatever they reported in 2019 so that that is quite interesting because this might have happened because they have added new pro- product portfolio they might have added new client or they might have expanded their market or something might have happened because otherwise it is not possible for them to increase their uh, uh, to uh, 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 deliver sales beyond what it was in 2019 when the industry was actually uh, declining or industry sales was declining so this is uh, uh, like uh, one aspect to look at so such companies can be outliers because they have find out uh, some other ways of growing actually so that that should be one case and for the companies that have not grown so you can also look at their fixed assets turnover ratio it is this is one ratio like uh, you can uh, look at what it was in 2018 or 2017 or 2019 when the sales was at its peak so that that can give an indication of what is the potential sales these companies can achieve when the overall sector recovers or the sector uh, again uh, starts to grow and uh, report uh, uh, better numbers so you can get, figure out how much uh, these sales these companies can actually grow their sales and uh, another point is to look at their valuation because now if you look at their valuation maybe because the industry was in a declining trend or it was uh, 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 reporting weak numbers their profitability might have affected uh, so they may be reporting uh, they may be showing higher pe and all but just uh, just uh, look at their average uh, uh, margins in the last 4 or 5 years and uh, 
based on those margins work out their valuations at present or uh, what if the industry recovers what will be their profitability and uh, sales when the industry recovers and that may provide a better indication of it and uh, we have actually uh, explained um, we have actually done a video on how you can use our stock screener to actually figure out this like uh, if you go to our stock screener you can at one go list of, list take the list of all the auto ancillary companies in one place and you can actually apply the filters on sales growth or ebitda growth or pad growth then on roi roc for whatever it was there for three year period or whatever it is like you can actually uh, apply various filters to arrive at a final list and you can also save the list and uh, retrieve it at a later point of time that is also possible and in each individual stock if you want to look at what was their 2019 sales what is it 2020 and 21 so all these things you can click the stock and go to the detailed pnl balance sheet and the financial ratios and to look at all those things so this is also available where you can uh, uh, go and check on uh, how the sales has been uh, for the last 3 or 4 years so whether there is opportunity to grow and all those things so this this uh, like uh, so there are two parts one is the qualitative parts and a qualitative part and qualitative part we can, we have explained in detail in our blog and this is the quantitative part where uh, which you can actually do using our uh, stock screener so this is how you can actually uh, 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 try to find out uh, the uh, winners amid this ev disruption back to you gaurav also uh, i will link both the links to the blog and the link to the screener video in the description below that's all for today we hope you've learned something new about the ev space if you did subscribe to prime investor and also if you have any questions for us or uh, if you want to share your views on the coming ev disruption leave a comment and we'll get back to you bye for now and see you next time bye, bye. thanks